wedding ring blanks. Uh, we produce various products for the dental industry and we are major, major precious metals refiners as I've already spoken. Uh, and we obviously have uh, LBMA good delivery status. Uh, we have a large scale production uh, facility for precious metal coin blanks in Madrid as I mentioned, uh, which has seen uh, incredible growth uh, in the last two to three years uh, with the uh, worldwide uh, increased sales of investment products. Uh, we also provide jewellery components and tools and are able to offer a wide range of uh, metallurgy services. Um, and finally, we are able to provide uh, chemicals, equipment, plating uh, products and other associated services. Um, so as you can see, hopefully this, this qualifies as, as a precious metals expert uh, to look at uh, the way that the numismatic uh, supply chain um, and how modern innovation is working alongside existing uh, production techniques. So we're obviously going to concentrate on what we're doing with coin blanks. So first up, uh, a quick look at uh, the abstract that I submitted to the, to the organisers, uh, to, to Dieter and Thomas. Um, Time-honoured cast and roll blank production processes are used to produce high quality precious metal coin blanks. This presentation will investigate how CAD CAM series production with CNC robot handling and highly compressed material producing a fine recrystallisation structure is adding a new dimension uh, to these techniques. This is opening the way for new finished coin, coin possibilities to, the mints, uh, to you, the mints around the world. So first of all, we'll look at the requirement. What's, what's happening? Today's mints are looking at various uh, ways to expand their product range, um, and with choice, uh, looking at different choices, large diameter coins uh, are becoming obviously more popular. Uh, the need to appeal to a different demographic and a buyer age groups has led to different shapes also being requested, such as hexagonal and octagonal coins. There's also an increasing, increasing demand for uh, high depth cylinder blanks, um, which will uh, not only be stuck, struck on the obverse and reverse, but also on the sides of the, the, uh, the coin. These heavily, heavy collector coins can range in, uh, range in weight from 250 grams to three kilos, and could be from 40 millimeters to 150 millimeters in diameter. As usual, the blanks supplied from, from us, the blank manufacturers, uh, require very tight uh, tolerances and highly accurate weights and dimensional specifications are obviously needed. The surface quality is always paramount for us uh, to ensure the struck coin does not include any surface defects, inclusions, spotting from cross-contamination from, uh, from other metals that we may have in production. The size and weight and uh, various complications encountered when producing these blanks often leads to production yield, which can, a low production yield, which can have a, uh, a huge impact on the cost of the product. However, a high quality product is, is of, still, of course still required by, uh, by you, the mints. So we'll have a quick look at a traditional process for a one kilo uh, blank and, and how it looks at the moment. Um, the yellow ingredients are selected and fed into a continue, continuous casting unit uh, for melting. Once molten uh, and thoroughly mixed, the casting is opened and uh, with a starter bar at its exit to support the metal as it's cast. Once casting is complete, there are various rolling and uh, annealing uh, stages that take place to ensure that the uh, to bring the, the, uh, the, the thickness of the uh, the sheet down to the required uh, level. Obviously, ensuring a, a good homogeneous uh, structure um, and a good grain size. The sheet is then stamped to a near net size to allow for turning to take place to bring the blank down to the correct diameter specification and removing any edge deformation that is caused uh, when the actual uh, the, uh, the the uh, the sheet has been struck. Uh, by the stamping process. Each piece is individually weighed by hand to ensure it meets the high weight uh, and uh, specifications required. And at the end of the process, the, uh, the blank is finished or treated to remove any surface imperfections. So the issues with this is that the nature of this process generates a low production yield, commonly 50%, uh, thus increasing the cost of, of production and requires a stamping tool to, tool to be produced, which can be very costly uh, which can deform the blanks actually during the, uh, when the, the blanks are being formed from the sheet. In addition, um, it's a highly uh, manual process for the turning, finishing and, uh, and weighing process, uh, which of course uh, in turn increases cost once more. So what have we come up with? What's the innovation? What, what have we brought to this? Um, this time-honoured production method that, that I've just spoken of uh, is proven and will produce a very satisfactory result. However, with the production of a, an X and Y access robot, we're able to turn, weigh and finish the blanks in one innovative and fully automatic step. 
Um, in this image, you can see the cylinder blacks loaded into their cartridge, ready to be uh, processed in the robot technology. And we'll see that shortly. So, an overview of how the process now looks. Um, you can see that there's a, a reduced number of process steps, um, but it actually includes a new step to further enhance the surface quality of the blanks, both obverse, reverse, and on the edges as required. Once again, the aloe ingredients are selected and fed into a static casting unit for melting. Once it's molten and mixed thoroughly, the ingots are cast as before. This is followed by uh, some uh, annealing and rolling steps once again to bring the sheet down to the required thickness. These ingots are then CNC cut to, uh, to the approximate diameter and then undergo a hammering process which further improves the surface finish. Finally, the blanks are rolled into the, the, uh, the robot for fine turning, weighing and finishing, providing a mirror finish uh, with an RA surface reading of measurement of between uh, 0.025 and 0.033. The yield improvement uh, that we see in this process um, takes it up to 80%, uh, reducing costs. There's no edge deformation and no tools have been required to stamp the blanks uh, in large presses, which are obviously costly. Um, the robot has, uh, has fully optimised the final stages and reducing manual in intervention and removing, obviously, a number of uh, process steps. So what we have next is a series of slides actually showing that, uh, that process in a pictorial form. Um, so first you will see uh, the casting taking place. Uh, fine gold or silver is loaded into the continuous caster and melted and cast. Then you will see that the cast material is, uh, is passed through a hammering process. And I should note that this, uh, this process that you can see now is for a production of a cylinder blank. Um, so it's passed through a hammering process to smooth the sides of the, uh, the rods, uh, improving the grain structure. And then the rods are cut to length uh, to a near net size uh, required by, uh, by the customer specifications. And then the cylinders are packed into uh, cartridges and loaded into the, uh, the robot machine that we have. Once again, this process comprises of automated turning, weighing and final finishing. And once loaded into the machine, the, it can run lights out with no manual intervention uh, required for each cylinder. And uh, each blank can take roughly about 60 seconds to, uh, to produce. At the end of the process, um, we're able to, uh, to strike the coins. Um, here you can see uh, a 45 mil diameter, uh, 49 silver Harmala Moila Cook Island uh, round bar, uh, which can range in weight from 250 grams to, uh, to a kilo. So let's take a look at a, at a video of that process in, in action. So you can see this is the, uh, the material being fed into the, uh, to the casting unit and the melting taking place, which is once again thoroughly mixed. And then this is the continuous casting equipment. You can see the starter bar and the rod starting to be, uh, to be fed through uh, the bottom of the casting unit. And these are the, uh, the, the pieces that come out of the uh, continuous uh, casting uh, unit that you've seen. And then these are fed into uh, a hammering or a swaging process that we use, uh, which really compounds the surface of the product um, and gives it a very fine grain structure. And these are the finished rods that you can see here. These are then um, cut to length, to the desired length uh, that the customer has uh, specified. Uh, it's an approximate length. And these are the pieces ready to, to be loaded into the cartridges in the, uh, the robot uh, technology. So these are the preformed cartridges that we produce for this particular type of blank. The, uh, the robot then selects a piece, makes sure it has a, a good uh, firm grip, and then it feeds it into uh, to the milling section of the, uh, the machine to start cutting the surfaces. And then it's just feeding it in. While that's taking place, while that piece is being cut, there's another piece that's already been finished. So it grabs hold of that one, takes this into a, a drying finishing area, which you can see here. And then finally, 
it will put that directly onto a set of scales so we can check, uh, check the weight of the product. And the target weight here was, uh, was a kilo and a gram. So that's the, that's the process and how it works. So the results that we've, uh, we've seen so far, just let that finish through. And of course, what we can see here is the, the striking process that we do at uh, Harmon and Boiler for the Cook Island Bank. And there's the, uh, the finished strap piece. Okay, so the results that we've seen uh, so far, and hopefully they'll come up, yeah. Um, so these are the results that we found from the implementation of this uh, the process, is that there's, there's no scalping from the continuous cast material required when it comes uh, from the casting unit. There's no blank deformation uh, from stamping. Uh, we don't need uh, large presses in order to, uh, to, to press these, uh, these huge uh, kilo blanks. <coughs> Uh, there's no tooling costs involved. Um, we have re reduced the, uh, the process steps and the manual handling involved of uh, the different steps that there was previously. Uh, we have a very good surface finish, a mirror surface finish with an RO of uh, 0 0.025 and 0 0.033, and a large yield increase from uh, 50 to 80 percent. Um, it's a handling through process that can be run lights out, once again um, implementing uh, impacting cost reduction. And the process enables uh, increased uh, production throughput of, of these particular type of uh, blanks and cylinders. The uh, dimensional tolerances uh, are plus or minus uh, 0 0.01 um, to 0 0.02 millimetres. And the weight precision for a kilo blank, uh, as an example, is minus nil plus 0.2%. Uh, uh, so by mixing innovation with traditional production techniques has led to a cost reduction which we've been required to, uh, to apply in order to hit a, a customer's price point whilst, of course, maintaining the, uh, the high standards of quality of uh, product that's required by, uh, by, by our industry. So I'd just like to thank my colleagues uh, from Harman and Moyla and uh, SEMSA for their continued support and, and effort. I'd also like to thank uh, the organiser of the World Money Fair for giving the opportunity to speak here today. And uh, finally, special thanks to, uh, to Dieter and uh, Thomas and Iris as well, who does a lot of work. Um, for the organisation and their time in organising the, uh, the technical forum. So thank you very much.